help people get services more in a you know preventive way, or you know at least early, at least an inter an earlier intervention than a physical health hospitalization or an ER visit. that we go to the grocery store to do, you know, the, the blood pressure. She was not aware that she had high blood pressure and her medication was interfering with that. So now she's eating better because we are aware of that. So she's losing weight because she's eating better. So everything goes together. So we are tackle one thing and, and we end up with several issues that we are working on with her. And she's happy. And she's feeling better. Her um, self-esteem is improving because she's losing weight. So her confidence is getting better. So it's, it's everything together. You see her uh, screenings and they're getting better. So it's, it's sometimes it's just one thing that you try and you work on the whole help. What they do in the mornings is they input any changes in status for people and then um, you know and then any new kind of screening data that's come in that hadn't been captured the day before and then they literally click a button <laughs> and they pull up their huddle prioritization report and it shows who is most urgent for them to talk about today, which is really different than what we tend to do in meetings. In, in, in community-based act fidelity meetings, you cover everybody on the caseload every single time, and that ensures you don't miss anybody, which is great, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you have a way of knowing who truly is the most acute person to talk about. And so what happens is either like the really squeaky wheels get talked about all the time or they don't get talked about at all because they're sort of annoying or bothersome or something's happened or people have given up hope or, you know. So this ensures that you're actually knowing like, well, somebody's got a really bad blood pressure score. We should be talking about them even though they seem like they're really fairly stable now in their housing and everything else. It also ensures that people that may have difficulty forming relationships with providers also get talked about. Shows, shows how the services are delivered differently, where the team could then talk about, like, well, why, is, why are they high? Well, he had his, you know, whatever, he, had, he, he did his audit, which is an alcohol abuse screening yesterday, and you can, you know, he was, he's using, he's drinking a lot again, and that's really interacting with his diabetes. And so, you know, I wonder if we can get him to come to the co-occurring education group today. You know, that kind of like, there was an immediate intervention, of like, well, what are we going to do today based on what we now know is true for him? Uh, it shows people who are actively suicidal, so you know you need to, you know, work with them that day, have a conversation with them about their risk. So I just think there's a there's something about it. it. It seems to engage people, and you see the accumulation, and you see all the little red flags on the screen, and you see you know, and you sort of walk through and tell a story about that person. I think that's when it becomes interesting. I think that it's easier to engage the client with some type of treatment when they see in front of them. It's not me. I am not telling them what to do. It's a tool that. They are answering. I, I give the iPad and I, please answer that. I can guide you if you are, you know, some people are scared of the computer. So they are doing, the results are, I have nothing to do with that. So I just do the, you know, 
after the, the, the result, I talked to them about it. And one of the clients, she decided to go to treatment. She said, yeah, I do have a problem. She's still, she's work in progress. But she was in pre-contemplation at, you know, when I met with her, she was in, in very resistant and, and then the computer did the work, not me. Well, I don't think that's actually true. <laughs>